Hello everyone. My name is Akshay Shek. I'm a postdoc at Navla at Stanford University. And today I'll be presenting our work on decentralized connectivity maintenance for multi-robot systems under motion and sensing uncertainties. Multi-robot systems are preferred for various tasks such as exploration, search and rescue, and target tracking. One of the main advantages of multi-robot systems is inter-robot communication for sharing and comparing information. This communication connectivity allows robots to coordinate and execute complex tasks efficiently, and also to detect and exclude any robot failures or malicious attacks. Given the importance of connectivity maintenance, let's take a look at some related work in literature. Here, we divide these works into two categories, gradient-based works and optimization works. Previous gradient-based approaches typically represent the multi-robot system as a weighted graph where the edge weights indicate how well two robots are con connected. They then use a decentralized architecture for connectivity maintenance. More recent works in this category additionally account for more realistic constraints, such as line of sight communication and collision avoidance. However, the main limitations in these works is that they do not account for motion and sensing uncertainties, which is inherent in practical robots. These uncertainties lead to deviations from desired trajectories and can result in unplanned disconnections. In our previous optimization-based work, we defined a weighted graph that accounted for these uncertainties. However, our algorithm had a centralized architecture and hence had limitations with scalability for practical systems. Thus, in our work, we aim to address these limitations. We first define a weighted graph that accounts for motion and sensing uncertainties, and also consider additional constraints of line of sight communication and collision avoidance. We then derive gradients of this weighted graph required for decentralized gradient based control. Finally, we show multiple simulation results to validate the connectivity maintenance performance of our algorithm. Here is the outline for the rest of the presentation. We will first formulate the connectivity maintenance problem. Then we will provide some relevant background from graph theory. Next, we will present a connectivity maintenance algorithm referred to as DCM. Finally, the simulation results followed by the sum. For a problem setup, we consider the multi-robot systems to, consider, uh, to consist of two types of robots, leader robots and follow robots. For leader robots, we assume that the nominal trajectory is available from some high-level plan. For example, this could be some high-level exploration strategy to explore unknown areas. On the other hand, the follower robots are tasked with rearranging themselves in order to maintain connectivity within the multi-robot system. In terms of the uncertainty, we assume each robot to be affected by Gaussian motion and sensing uncertainties. Each robot uses a Kalman filter for state estimation and uses feedback control to track the trajectory. This setup for each robot results in a Gaussian distribution of the robot's position about its nominal uh, trajectory which is shown by gray ellipses in this way. For connectivity, we consider two robots to be connected only if they are within a specific uh, communication range of each other and they have a direct line of sight and are also collision free. Thus, given all this information, the final objective of our algorithm is to derive control inputs for the follower robots such that connectivity is maintained. Next, let's take a look at some relevant background from graph theory. As we saw earlier in some of the related works, multi-robot systems are typically represented by weighted graphs, where the edge weight between robots indicate the connection quality, a value of one meaning a strong connection and lower values meaning a, leak, a weaker connection. These edge weights can be used to construct the graph Laplacian matrix, which contains connectivity information for the system. The second smallest eigenvalue of this matrix is called the algebraic connectivity, and it indicates how well connected the graph is, and the corresponding eigenvector is known as the Fiedler vector. Here you can see how the algebraic connectivity varies for different graph configurations. For a fully connected graph, 
the, the value is the highest, which is the number of nodes. And in this case, that is six. And you can notice as the graph gets more disconnected, the value decreases, remaining greater than zero as long as the graph is connected and going to zero for a disconnected system. Next, let's take a look at our connectivity maintenance algorithm. Our algorithm consists of three main components. We first derive a weighted graph, uh, we first define a weighted graph to represent the system connectivity while accounting for uncertain robot positions due to motion and sensing uncertainties. In this graph, we also account for the line of sight communication constraint and the collision avoidance constraint. Next, we use a decentralized power iteration method similar to previous works where each robot uh, communicates with its neighbors and estimates how connected it is to the rest of the system. Finally, using the information from the first two components, each robot com computes a gradient-based control in a decentralized manner where, uh, where the objective is to maintain connectivity within the system. In the following slides, we will go through these components one by one. For the weighted graph, we want to account for uncertain robot positions, which are due to motion and sensing uncertainties. And we also want to account for constraints such as the communication range, the line of sight, and the collision avoidance. To account for the uncertain robot positions, we consider an overbounding disk around a three sigma confidence ellipse for each robot, as shown over here. For the edge width between any two robots, we define them as a product of four factors, where each of these factors varies from zero to one, and each of these factors represent the different constraints that we want to consider for the weighted graph. For the communication range constraint, we consider the following uh, distance measure, which accounts for the uncertainty in the robot positions. When the distance measure is small, the communication range factor uh, alpha is equal to one. And as the measure grows, alpha value decreases. Similarly, for the line of sight constraint, we define the following uh, distance measure for how close the nearest obstacle is to the line of sight between the uncertain robot positions. If the obstacle is far away, the, the value of beta is high and is equal to one. And as the obstacle gets closer, that is as the distance measure decreases, the value of beta also decreases, going to zero when the obstacle is within this tube of line of sight. Finally, for the collision avoidance constraint, we define measures of how close each robot is to a collision. For instance, in this case, the closest collision point for robot I is robot J, and which is measured by this distance measure. Whereas for robot J, the closest collision point is the obstacle shown over here and is measured by this distance measure. As the measure increases or as the measure uh, decreases, we can notice that the collision point gets closer for each robot. And similarly, the value for gamma, which is the factor representing the collision constraint, uh, goes to zero. Thus, in summary, the edge width between two robots, which is a product of these four factors, goes to zero if any of these constraints uh, are violated, uh, which is represented by any of these factors going to zero. The second component of our algorithm is the decentralized power iteration method, which is used to estimate the system connectivity information. Since robots only communicate with their connected neighbors, uh, each robot does not have complete information about the weighted graph. Thus, similar to previous works, we use the power iteration method for each robot to estimate the connectivity information. Each robot uh, estimates the algebraic connectivity of the weighted graph along with a component of the Fiedler vector. A quick reminder from the background slide, uh, the algebraic connectivity is the second smallest eigenvalue of the graph Laplacian matrix and the Fiedler vector is the corresponding eigenvalue. These estimated values are later used in the gradient-based control, as we will see next. The third component of algorithm is the gradient-based control. 
We first consider a value function such that uh, it increases as the, as the algebraic connectivity value goes to zero. Next, in order to maintain connectivity, we perform a gradient descent of this value function as shown over here. This gives us the following expression for the controlled input, which is finally a function of the gradient of the value function, the, which is the gradient of the value function, the gradient of the edge weights, and also uh, a function of the estimated field of vectors. Note that the edge weight uh, of the weighted graph is a product of four factors, which gives us the following expression for its gradient. The, ex the detailed expressions for each of these papers, uh, for each of these gradients can be found in our paper. Let's take a look, quick look at an illustration of how the gradient-based control works. Consider the simple case of a multi-robot system with just one leader and one follower robot. For simplicity, we'll focus only on changes in the communication range factor over here. And thus all other factors would be equal to uh, one and the gradients of those factors would be zero. Now, as the leader robot moves to the right direction, the distance between the robots increases and the communication range factor decreases. Due to this change in the communication range factor, the gradient of alpha uh, becomes non-zero. And this eventually results in a non-zero control input for the follower, follower robot and which forces it to move to the right direction and thus uh, maintaining connectivity with the leader robot. This in a sense represents how the gradient-based control works uh, for the communication range factor. And a similar intuition can be applied for the remaining factors such as the line of sight and the collision factors. Next, let's take a look at some, uh, some of the simulation results. We perform simulations in two environments, uh, MATLAB and SE. In both environments, we consider two dimensional setups with single integrator motion models and positioning sensors. The MATLAB simulations uh, allow us to quantitatively compare our algorithm with previous work from Sabatini et al. And on the other hand, the SM simulations, they allow us to validate our algorithm on a higher fidelity simulator. Uh, for both these setups, we first analyze uh, our algorithm on a simple two robot setup, and then we move to a more complex multi-robot uh, system. For the two robot setup, consider the following scenario, uh, in which we have one leader robot and one follower robot, and an obstacle in the environment. Here, the blue ellipses, they represent the three sigma confidence uh, region for each robot's uncertain position. And the green line represents the connectivity. So as the leader robot uh, moves to the right direction over here, uh, similar to the illustration that we saw earlier, the communication range factor decreases and which forces the follow robot to follow the leader robot in, in the right direction. While turning over here, our algorithm also ensures that connectivity is maintained in terms of other factors such as line of sight, and also that the follow robot does not collide with the obstacle. We compare our algorithm uh, with the algorithm presented by Sabatini et al, which is a gradient-based controller which does not account for these motion and sensing certainties. Uh, and over here, you can see that you, you can See in a bit how the algorithm by Sabatini leads to a break in the connectivity or disconnection due to various factors, uh, such as the communication range, uh, the line of sight, and the collision. For example, over here, the communication uh, connectivity broke between the two robots due to uh, them being out of the line of sight. And whereas over here, they broke because they were out of the communication range. Whereas over here, because the two robots collide. For the same setup, we vary the motion and sensing uncertainty, and we run both algorithms uh, a thousand times each uh, for each of the case. Comparing the ratio of runs for which uh, connectivity was maintained, we can see that our algorithm successfully maintained connectivity for all the runs. 
The previous algorithm by Sabatini et al. performs similar when there is no uncertainty. However, as the uncertainty increases um, for both the motion and the sensing uncertainties, uh, you can see that the ratio of successful runs decreases for the previous algorithm. Thus, our algorithm is able to achieve better connectivity maintenance performance under the presence of motion and sensing uncertainties. Next, we take a look at how our algorithm performs for different multi-robot setups, and we compare it to previous work by Sabatini et al. Over here, again, we uh, observe similar results. As the motion and sensing uncertainties increase, our algorithm maintains the connectivity for all the runs. Uh, however, the previous algorithm by Sabatini et al, they perform similar for the case when there's no uncertainty. But however, as motion and sensing uncertainty increases, the performance uh, goes down in terms of uh, successful connectivity maintained runs. Next, we validate our algorithm on ASIM, beginning with a two robot setup as uh, we did with MATLAB. And here we include some additional visuals uh, to aid with the to aid the understanding of the simulation. The plots on the left, they show how different connectivity factors between the robots vary. And these factors are again, the communication range factor, the line of sight factor, and the collision factor. Uh, the plot on the right shows the algebraic connectivity of the system. As we had seen earlier, uh, a quick reminder that the algebraic connectivity value being greater than zero implies that the system is connected. So the goal of the simulation is to see that our algorithm is able to maintain connectivity in this higher fidelity simulation uh, in the presence of motion and sensing uncertainties. And I will let this video run to see how the connectivity values vary um, as the robots move and also how the communication factors change forcing the follower robot to uh, follow the drone, follow the leader robot under varying Meeting conditions. Next, we consider a multi robots. We consider the multi robot systems with different configurations. And again, over here, we can observe that the leader robots, um, the leader robot, as the leader robots move, the follow robots uh, follow these robots in order to maintain connectivity. And over here, again, you can see the algebraic connectivity values across time. Um, and the main takeaway over here is that algorithm is able to maintain the connectivity. That is, it, it's able to maintain the algebraic connectivity value greater than zero uh, during the run. Thus, in summary, uh, we first define a weighted graph for a multi-robot system that accounted for both motion and sensing uncertainties. And it also accounted for more realistic communication constraints, such as line of sight connectivity, and also for the collision avoidance of each robot. We then derived the gradients that were required for our decentralized controller, which allowed our robots to maintain connectivity in the system. And finally, we validated our algorithm for various multi-robot setups and showed an improvement in the connectivity maintenance performance under uncertainty compared to previous works. Thank you.